Uh, we are continuing during this field school to uncover burials uh, that were first uncovered during Katrina. And we are up to burial number 29. And these burials are being excavated by our students, a very um, a marvelous learning experience. And they are being taken, will be taken back to the lab and analyzed and then eventually reburied. First of all, they're learning to work in a team. You don't get a lot of opportunities. Your, your education doesn't train you to be a team member very much. And, and so they're part of a team and they're living together and eating together and working together for six weeks. And that's an experience that is really invaluable. Secondly, a lot of the skills that they're getting here, a lot of our uh, students are in criminal uh, administration of justice and uh, crime scene uh, documentation, a lot of that is very similar to archaeological skills, so they're learning about that. And then, of course, they're learning about the, the past, uh, in this case, the French colonial past here on the Gulf Coast. First uh, arrivals for, of Europeans in this area was 1699 with Bienville. Uh, and D'Iberville, I mean, and then uh, the French uh, tried to establish a series of settlements called concessions, and they were encouraging people to come over from France and other European countries, but not Spain, uh, and protect this territory essentially from, from Spanish and a little bit of British as well. And so they had a number of these concessions, and this is the LeBlanc concession. And then, um, unfortunately, what happened is, is they decided to move the capital, uh, the major ports, to New Orleans and, and Mobile. And so this sort of faded away, and most of the settlers uh, kind of moved uh, in both directions. A lot of the settlers appear to have come from the lower segments of, of European society. Um, we can tell that because the skeletal data shows us that they had periods of severe malnutrition in childhood and they continue to experience bouts of malnutrition, famine essentially, levels, um, and maybe even here as well. And that made them vulnerable to a wide range of diseases. And some of those diseases did in fact manifest on the skeleton. And we'll be doing DNA uh, tests for the, some of the diseases as well uh, to, to pick up on some of that. So their conditions were a bit harsh. It was difficult. You know, there's a handful of settlers. Most of them were men, a few women, and they're trying to uh, build and get everything they needed to live because they weren't getting a lot from France on the boats. The boats would come maybe two or th every two or three years. This area wasn't great for farming, so uh, I would think they were more interested in shipbuilding, trading, um, so establishing ports for trading in the Gulf, and um, uh, they, had, they were making bricks, but that was probably for forts. They wanted to build forts. The Moran Art Studio was here, and in, a lot of the coast residents recognize been here for years. And when Camille hit, the, there was a bit of structural damage, and when they were working to fix that, they discovered or rediscovered the burials here and uncovered 13 of those um, back in the 60s. There were skeletal remains, but the, the, I think that they assumed that they were Native American, but we don't have any evidence of that. All of the parts that we're getting, the burials, uh, have features that we would associate with European ancestry. Not, not Native American ancestry. We lost so much above ground in Katrina, and the, I think the thought of different communities reestablishing themselves up and down the coast, a, a community without its history and heritage feels a little lost. There's no direction. But the history is still here. We just have to dig for it. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon each one of you and remain with you forever. Amen.